From Hollywood, it's time now for John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Ken Ralston, Johnny. Oh, hi, Ken. How's Kansas City? Uh, take my word, in Hollywood it's better. Oh? You always liked Hollywood, didn't you, Johnny? You want me to? Well, there's a man there named Phil Gardner. It's up to here in Starlets. In what? Starlets. Young girls with big careers in front of them. Phil Gardner's an agent for him. So he needs me? Oh, we do, Johnny. Twin State Insurance. Gardner's been calling me every half hour. It's, uh, it's like this, Johnny. Gardner's insured a few of these starlets with us. One in particular for 50 grand. So? So, mostly Gardner's been babbling. He says this starlet in particular might not live. Babble, somebody wants her dead any second. You like Hollywood, Johnny? Commission? Fat. Real fat. Hollywood. I like it. <laughs> John Lund in a transcribed adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Twin State Insurance Company, Kansas City, Missouri. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Starlet matter. Expense account item one, $227.70. Airfare round trip on coach out of LaGuardia, flight 601, flying west. Some 3,000 bumpy miles later, the plane circled Los Angeles in a part of the Pacific Ocean and taxied down the runway at International Airport. It was 3.20 of a dirty afternoon. Expense account item two, 440, cab fare to Sunset Ruxton Hotel, my home away from home in Hollywood. Where I checked in, renewed old acquaintances with Judy, the telephone girl, put my pale cheek against her suntan and told her I'd see her later. Expense account item three, two dollars even, to Beverly Hills office of Phil Gardner, agent. He was not in. The receptionist in silver hair pointed a silver fingertip across the street and said that's where. Shea Scotty's restaurant. And Mr. Gardner would be dressed with two vents in the back, a tattersall vest, and blue suede sandals. And you know, he was. So you're the boy they sent from KC, huh? Wait, I'll scooch over a little. You can sit down. Yeah, thanks. What's your name? Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Uh, you want to see a picture, Johnny? Here, take a look. That's Toby. Toby? Toby Drake. You've seen her in pictures. I have. You're living. You must have seen her in pictures. Loyal moviegoers like you are going to make a star out of Toby. Well, I'm happy for both of you. If she lives... Somebody's going to kill her, Johnny. Murder her dead. Now, she's a sweet kid. It shouldn't happen to her to die from these anonymous threats. Look, why don't you give it to your press agent? Johnny, believe me, on my knees, I tell you. If I want publicity, I give it to the cops. I'm not kidding, Johnny. The kid's scared. She's in a lot of trouble. Oh, you, Mr. Gardner. I'll plug it in here. Oh, thanks, Charlie. Right this way. Gardner speaking. Snap it out. I'm busy. Huh? No. Yeah, huh? No. Yeah. Skeptic. Huh? I just called you skeptic. What's that mean? Toby's dead. Her boyfriend called. I should be the first to know. I'm sorry. Look, I'll drive you over there. You, you'll want to see for insurance purposes, huh? I'll use the jag. I'll put the top down. Sure. You wouldn't go to a funeral any other way, would you, Phil? Swarming with things. Chintz curtains, plump upholstery, and Beverly Hills Oriental knickknacks cluttering the Grand Rapids High Boy. I walked over to the three piece section. Toby Drake was lying there, her hand trailing down to the floor. I couldn't see her face until the big man stood up. Uh, 
Somebody wrapped that black silk stocking too tight around her neck. You wrapped the stocking? Look, Buster, a call came to headquarters and said, get here because there was a dead girl named Toby Drake. There is. And all of a sudden, you're here. Why? Something they have around this town. An agent. He's Toby's. Oh, agent? Oh, well, well. Talk to me, agent. No, sure, Lieutenant. Uh-uh. Just Detective Koska, Lieutenant I'll never make. Go ahead. Well, it was like this. Johnny and me sit there at Scotty's chewing fat, and the phone was brought over, and the man on the other end says it's Mr. Fulton. And he says his girlfriend's dead. Honest, I'm broken up about this. I... Well, well, well. You wrap the stocker, Agent? Johnny. He's Johnny Dollar. He's from the insurance. Well, well, well. You been hired, Dollar? Yeah. Twin City Insurance. And for me, too, Johnny. All the way, find out for me who killed Toby. Hi, uh, these guys employ you, eh? Well, well, little balls there. You carry a gun, too. Oh, uh, well, well. Yeah. Where's her boyfriend? In the bedroom. Name's Roy Fulton. He hardly says a word to me. Go talk to him, Dollar. Go tell him it's okay. Talk to him. Johnny Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Toby's dead. She was murdered, Mr. Fulton. I'm trying to find out who did it. We had a date. I came here. I saw her. I didn't lose my head. I, I called her agent. And then I called the police. Did you kill her? No. No. But she should have been more careful. Girls like her. What kind of girl did you think she was? Very pretty. Just beautiful. Now no more. Toby. Just beautiful Toby. Mr. Fulton. Lost. Forever. Mr. Fulton. For always. Nowhere. Toby. Beautiful Toby. I couldn't get through to him anymore. I gave him back to Casca, and I got out of there. A few thoughts on Toby Drake. Toby, a kid who'd once maybe won a beauty contest. Expenses paid to Hollywood, shake hands with the stars. A nice kid. Pretty kid, on her way, now dead. I bought a paper and went back to my hotel. The lobby desk came first. Any calls for me, Judy? You got a call with a message. You want it? Why don't you come over here and give it to me, Judy? I've never seen you standing up. I'm taller. The message came in ten minutes ago. You want to reach for it? Shall I read it to you? Read it. Goes like this. First Toby, then Stella Martin. You can't stop at Dollar. First Toby, then Stella Martin? You ad-libbing this, Judy? Says right here. Who left the message? I took the call. The man said it and hung up. What does uh, Stella Martin see me, Mr. Dollar? I wish I knew, baby. You think maybe the starlet Stella Martin used to be a starlet? She's not around much anymore. Starlet, huh? How would I get in touch with a starlet, Judy? Oh, I know. Hand me that phone book. Come on, come on. Who are you calling? A man who knows Starlet's past and present. Agent Phil Gardner. Oh. Not in, huh? Why don't you try Hollywood casting, Mr. Dollar? They'd know. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Stella Martin dropped from our ready file. Non-payment of dues. Well, it must be an address where you dunned her. 2001 Magnolia Avenue, Westchester. Yeah. 
You want what, mister? Stella Martin. She live here? Uh-huh. You're who? Johnny Dollar. Investigations. You got a card that says that? Let's go inside, huh? Just you got a card, just show me. Miss Martin here? No card, huh? Suppose I say, yeah, she's here. And what happens? I said inside. I'm glad you did that, Sonny. Now I got a reason. Now cut it out. I just want to... You're smaller than you look. Oh, try me. Later, when I opened my eyes, he was gone. I got to my feet, fell down, then finally made it over to the hallway, where there should have been a bathroom and a towel and some water. The thing that stopped me was the girl in the negligee. She was sitting on the floor against the wall. She was blonde, and her head was turned to one side as if she was wondering about me. There was a stocking tied around her throat, and she was dead. We'll return to yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in just a moment. Now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. jungle picture spliced between the main feature and the newsreel. The girl in the South Sea apron who gets chased by the gorilla. I stopped trying to convince myself it wasn't real. It was real, all right. I didn't need the pounding on the door to knock it into my head. I didn't need Detective Koska, either. What is this, Dollar? You on a rampage? Now, you want to know what happened, or you want to be a big man? Just be gentle with me. That's all I want you to do. Fifteen minutes ago, I was in a warm bed. Oh, just be gentle. I got slugged. A man seven feet tall in a black leather Look, jacket. I spent five hours questioning Roy Fulton about the murder of this girlfriend of his, Toby. Nothing. I let him go. Then I climb into this warm bed and I was sleeping fine. Then Sergeant Hurd called. Seems someone phoned in this address to Sergeant Hurd. Now, uh, you were saying what, Dollar? She's in the hallway, propped against the wall. Show me. Sigh a deep sigh about the warm bed, Casca. She's young and she's strangled. And her name's Stella Martin. Uh, you want to clear it up for me? I got word about her. I came here and a guy clobbered me. I woke up a few minutes ago. Nobody gives me word, Stella. Why you? I don't know why. If I knew why, I'd know who. You want to listen about a guy in a black leather jacket? Seven feet tall, huh? Yeah, about. Brown felt hat. Find him. That oughtn't to be tough for a big man like you. Ah, uh, don't be sour on me, Dollar. You took some lumps. Uh, you see this, kid? What? Yeah. She's holding something in her hand. What? Hmm. Well, now, well, well. Read it, Johnny. Read what it says. There'll be another one tomorrow. Dollar. Another one tomorrow, Dollar. Well, What makes me so popular, Casca? Why doesn't it say your name? Because it says Dollar. Because it says the name of a guy I stumble over when I get out of a warm bed. What am I going to do with you? Take you downtown and sweat you? Get out of here, Dollar. Get out. Then back into the rose-scented air in the suburban lawn, now littered with friends and neighbors. And under the bright neon of the corner cut-rate drugs and sundries, the night-blooming hack stand. I took a cab to my hotel. No more messages, so I went to sleep. And the next morning, the sound of the telephone screaming the name of Phil Gardner, agent. Get here, it said. 
So I got there. Girls drop like flies where you walk, Dollar. I read the papers this morning, and you were there, and another one dropped. Now, what's the matter, Phil? Only yesterday we were in love, you and I. Uh, now, don't ask me, can't we even be friends? It's a tired line from a tired guy. I don't like tired. Let me tell you something, Phil. I'm glad you called. You were going to be my first stop. Now, look, you were hired to maybe prevent Toby Drake's dying. And this, you were a flopola, a stinker Then you stay on. Maybe you could come up with why Toby, a talented girl, had to die. Well, like I said, stinker On your, your feet, Phil. Now, now, keep away from me, Johnny. On your feet. Now, Johnny. Now we talk. I, I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking. You killed Toby, oh, Phil? Oh, arm, Johnny. Toby was on her way, maybe a star soon. Also with insurance, $50,000. Beneficiary, you. My arm. That why you killed her? Oh, Johnny. And all this big talk on the phone this morning. Get down here. Cover up talk, Phil. All right. And we'll try the name Stella Martin. I'll live with you. Just let go of my arm. St- Stella Martin, a three months ago pickup. From Dorcas Drive in on Santa Monica. A guy gets lonesome for a car hop like Stella. A friendly pickup, so help me. Huh. You did lovely, Phil. Now, one thing more. You know a man who wears a leather jacket who's seven feet tall? Somebody help me. I got a madman loose. Goodbye, Phil. You've made the morning even worse. I got to the drive-in on Santa Monica. A cowgirl with a menu and a pair of heavy-duty sheer dungarees threw a card on my windshield that said Phyllis on it. Dorcas, she asked back? Why, that's old Mel, over that way. I moseyed on over to old Mel. Howdy. Johnny Dollar, insurance investigations. Milton Gorkis. Shout out a fella. Howdy. Howdy. You the manager of this place, Mel? Yeah. Top hand. Oh, what else? Huh? Oh, a tenderfoot talk. Don't let us throw you. I uh, need some information, Mel. Yeah, don't be a gravel kicker, son. Speak up. What's on your mind? Know a girl named Toby Drake, Mel? Uh, no, dear. Used to work here. One named Stella Martin? Yep. Yeah. Do the work this evening. She ain't gonna make it, though. She's dead. She and Toby. Shoot. Seen it in the Gazette. I need your help, Mel. Deputize me. Well, I don't know. I just don't know. If you don't help, there's liable to be another dead girl. Peggy. Who? What's the matter, son? You got monkeys in your ears? I said Peggy. Peggy Brian. On account of them three girls were thick in the bobcat's tail. To tell. Yeah, thicker than that even. Peggy used to work here, too. Drove to work in Toby's auto. You know where I can find Peggy? North Hollywood. She lives in. Hey, wait a bit. I'll dig up her address. You want to wait, son, or you got to be right none? I'll wait, Mel. Listen to me, Miss Bryan. I've come to help you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you before you kill me. Don't be crazy. Give me that gun. There. That's better. To kill me. That's why you come to kill me. Now, let's scream inside. We don't want to make talk for the neighbors. Inside, Peggy. Now, hush, hush, baby girl. Hush. You see? I let you go. It's nothing to be scared of. I'm here to help you. To keep it from happening. Like it did to Stella and Toby. You understand what I'm saying, Peggy? Stella. Toby, they're dead. And now it'll be me. Why does it have to be you, Peggy? You don't know. You kill and you don't know why. Try to understand. I'm an insurance investigator. A lot of times I'm around when people die. Sometimes I get there sooner. Now help me. Help me, Peggy, so I can help you. That way will save us both a lot of pain. I'm so frightened. Because I'm so frightened. Whoever killed Toby and Stella, why would they want to kill you? I, I know why. I think I know. Well, tell me, Peggy. A woman was killed. We killed her. Tell me about it. 
was three years ago. Oh, we, Stella and I, we had a little car. We used to take trips. Three summers ago, we took a trip to Oregon. One day. One day what? This woman crashed into us. It was her fault. Honest, it was her fault. And she was killed? Married woman. Young and pretty. And married. Police said it wasn't our fault. And let us go. Only me. Why else would anyone want us dead? It's uh, Saturday, Peggy. What do you do with yourself on Saturdays? I shop. For groceries. A new dress sometimes. We'll go buy a new one. You and me. And tonight. What do we do tonight? You mean you're asking me for a date? Uh Uh-huh. What do we do tonight? Saturday nights, I usually go to Ocean Park. It's fun. Rides with people. It's fun. Sure it is. Saturday night, Ocean Park. We'll have fun. So I made a lot of phone calls. To my hotel to tell Judy I was going to Ocean Park with a girl named Peggy Bryan, in case anyone inquired. And I called Agent Phil Gardner and let him know where I was going. Finally, I called Roy Fulton, Toby's boyfriend, and let him know all about my plans for the evening. And then I went shopping with Peggy Bryan and then took her to Ocean Park. Peggy Bryan, pigeon. Let's just walk for a while, Johnny. Whatever you say. You hungry, Peggy? Uh Uh-uh. Let's go on the roller coaster. Sure. Peggy. What? Just stand still for a moment. Look around you. Do you see anybody you know? No. I know what you're doing, Johnny. Why, sure. I'm on a Saturday night date with a nice girl. You think you'll find me here, Johnny? You want me to level, don't you? Is he going to kill me? I'm going to try to stop him, Peggy. Come on, let's eat. Two tickets, please. Thanks. Let's go, Peggy. Stay close to me, Johnny. A girl can get lost in the fun house. Johnny. Oh, Johnny. What's the matter, Peggy? Uh, Nothing. I'm having such a good time. Ever been through that spinning barrel? Oh, I always fall down. I'll hold your hand. Johnny. What? That man, that man over there. He watched us buy our tickets. Which man? The tall one. Yeah, I see him. Peggy, walk through that spinning barrel. Fall down if you have to, but get right up and get out on the other side. Is he the one? Go on, I'm right in back of you. He's following us. Get out of this thing fast. I'm staying. I've been tearing you, Seamus. I've been waiting. <laughs> Shorty? Yeah, yeah. Come on, I'll drag you out of here. Now talk. Talk or so help You're me. You're crazy, Seamus. Talk. You think I killed her? I didn't kill Stella. She was dead when I got there. I swear she was dead. Yeah, yeah, sure she and was. And you came in. I I went crazy. I wanted to kill something to get even. And why are you following me? Because you're a Seamus. If we get to the killer, I want a piece of him. I didn't kill Stella. I was in love with her. You gotta believe me. You got to. Peggy, what's the matter? The mirror. Look, the mirror. He was in the mirror, all right. Roy Fulton's reflection. Boyfriend of Toby. Long and thin as if he'd been squeezed together, which included the gun he was holding. I pulled Peggy down on the floor with me and grabbed for my gun. It's her! It's her! It's her! I'm... 
Something happened to him. Something red that splintered in the front of his shirt. But he kept coming. Then the something caught up with him. Fulton. Fulton. Hey. Are you... They killed my wife. They killed her. Expense account item four, 1995, to dress a pigeon named Peggy Bryan. Item five, $112 miscellaneous. Hotels, meals, roller coaster ride, fun house, etc. Expense account total, $366.05. Remarks, pay Phil Gardner, agent, face value of $50,000 policy on Toby Drake. Well, all in all, from your point of view, my trip to Hollywood was a failure. From my point of view, I kept one girl out of three alive, and I was lucky at that. Luckier than you usually get in Hollywood. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin with music by Eddie Dunstetter. John Lund can currently be seen in the Universal International picture just across the street. Featured in tonight's cast were Raymond Burr, Dick Ryan, John McIntyre, Sidney Miller, Victor Perrin, Virginia Gregg, and Jeanette Nolan. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar is transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> This is Dan Coverly inviting you to join us next week at this time when John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Tomorrow, Gangbusters brings you on CBS Radio another true crime story, naming names and places, giving complete details on the operations of a ruthless criminal gang showing you how the cops, after a bitter manhunt, put them out of business. Every Saturday night on most of these same stations, hear Gangbusters, the program that gives criminals wanted descriptions that help the public enforce the law and often collect rewards for their good citizenship. Gangbusters, Saturday nights on CBS Radio. And remember, you'll find Western Adventure and Music with Gene Autry, Saturday evenings on the CBS Radio Network.